Hey friends, what's up? So today I thought I'd talk about um, the second argument to JSON stringify. So if you've ever used JSON stringify before, whoa, let's just move that down a little bit. Um, <clears throat> okay, so if you've used JSON stringify before, it was probably to um, serialize some data into a string maybe if you were sending it down the wire, but most of the time when people are using JSON stringify, it's just to take this object and, and console log it out um, or something uh, so you can see what it what it looks like. And so here you're going to say json.stringify and then obj1. And then here if you do that, we'll console whoop, console.log json stringify. Cool. And then you get obj1. Cool. So you get the string version of that thing. Um, if you want that to be formatted nicely, then you're going to put as a second argument null and then the third argument will be your spacing so now it's formatted as a nice json string which is cool so um, the second argument in json stringify we always put null like almost always and i remember um, a while back thinking what on earth is that argument i looked up on mdn and i figured it out it is called a replacer as was so noted by car like mike regent so um here we've got our input, and we have our title, publish date, and movie release date. This is gone with the wind. Um, and the second argument to JSON stringify here is our replacer. Now this replacer has a couple interesting things about it. Um, it is basically, it's a function that's called with every non-primitive of, um, of your JavaScript object that you're stringifying. So it'll, it'll go down um, through all of the, the sub-properties and things here. Let's... Um, publish info just to prove that fact here so um, so yeah it'll go through all of these um, all of the prop all of the non-primitive properties and it'll say here's the um, key of that property so publish date and here's the value of that property um, so here in our case it's a date object and so we're saying if this uh, key is an instance of a date then we're going to uh, return the value dot substring zero to ten, which gives us um, only this first part. It, it like basically here. Actually, let's remove the replacer so you see what it, uh, the replacer is actually doing for us. Uh, this is what it normally looks like when you serialize a date. And if we said, hey, we don't care about the time, then we can get rid of that time um, by providing this replacer, and we'll just substring um, that value. So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and we'll console log. Um, all the values and the keys. So we just see what um, things are not getting applied here. So uh, first we actually get the entire object. That's the first replacer, um, which is interesting. So the, I think the key in that case is undefined. Um, here, let's type of key. Um, oh, excuse me, I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> Easy. I'm going to sneeze again. <coughs> ah. Excuse me. Okay. So that's interesting. The key is a string. Let's, uh, maybe it's an empty string. Key is an empty string. Yeah. Okay. So it's an empty string, uh, for the, for the entire object. When this replacer is called with the entire object, it's, you know, the key is going to be an empty string. Um, that's kind of weird, but that it is what it is. And then you get the value that'll be the entire object. And then it'll go through all of the properties. So now we have title, uh, or so that's the key, and then the value is gone with the wind. Then we have the key of publish info, and that's the entire object. And then we have, um, well, then we skip this because we're uh, doing an early exit. So yeah, then we get the publish date. That's That key is a date. Movie release date, that key is also, or that value is a date also. Cool, right? So um, this actually has some interesting implications because it, it means like, I remember I often would have like a um, a cleanup, like, especially in Angular when I was like, uh, I would read stuff from the database and then I'd attach a bunch of properties onto it. And then before I'd go save it to the database, I'd remove all of those properties I attached. Uh, I actually had one um, Angular transformer thing that would um, take the back end and all of the back end um, properties were underscore um, instead of camel case. So it was uh, snake case instead of camel case. 
that really bothered me so i transformed it on the way in converted it to camel case and then on the way out i would transform it to snake case again um which is interesting i i could probably um on the way out i could have probably used json stringify for that um with a custom replacer which is kind of interesting interesting idea um but also if there's a, any time that you need to like do deep process uh, deep processing of um a javascript object rather than uh, manually going through and and um traversing this object you might be able to use json stringify um to with a replacer and then um json parse probably wouldn't be the fastest but it might be a little easier um i don't know something to think about let me just check out comments and then i'm going to jump out let's see um Ryan Smiles says it's null. Ryan Florence. Oh, thanks, Ryan Florence. <laughs> um, I use null as a second argument. Yeah, everybody does. Can we build a tag template literal to build from CSS like object to JSON? Um, probably, I guess. Yeah. Uh, okay, I think React internals should know how to map object to CSS in the reverse. Uh, yeah, okay. Here, let's show that thing Andrew posted. Okay. The replacer object can be an array of... Oh, right, yeah. Thank you, Christian. It reminded me that you can actually also provide an array of um, properties that you want to have preserved in uh, what you're stringifying. So we could say, instead, let's say we only wanted to get the title. Cool. So now we're only... We're removing every key that is not title, which is interesting. We can also say, what if we also wanted publish date? We're not actually going to get that because it's not part of the root. So you can only specify keys that are part of the root. Um, well, OK, so it needs to be part of the root or, or there needs to be a path for it. So if we say, hey, we want the uh, published date, but publish info is going to be ignored because it's not part of that string. So you're going to have to provide the publish info as well. And then you can get the published date. Which is cool. Um, this also applies to arrays. So if we wrap this up in array, um, then it'll still um, work. And we can put another item in here. And like, um, I don't know, n in black. I, I don't even know why that came to my mind, but there you go. So we've got um, that one coming through too. So it works with arrays um, using this array input. That one's kind of interesting, um, but it's basically like uh, kind of like pluck off these things. Um, just yeah, I wouldn't generally trust JSON stringify to be very fast, and so um, and that's just my armchair performance kind of thing. Like uh, I don't think that'd be fast. Um, so if you're dealing with like silly amount of data, then maybe I would benchmark it. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of interesting. One other thing. I actually made a lesson on Egghead a couple of years ago um, about the JSON stringify API, everything you could possibly ever want to know about it, um, including what we talked about as well as what the third argument does um, and other other interesting things about like if your object has a to JSON, what does that do? Um, so kind of interesting stuff. You might check it out. I will paste a link to this. I think I think it's free. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. Free. If it's not, then um, get a subscription because it's really useful. Um, okay, would be useful for serialized, deserialized data for local storage. Yep. All right, I'm going to jump out. This was awesome, and I hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you all next time. Bye.